This takes three of these sent us from Santa Fe in the past two months. And Rocky, I think they may be the clue to the most wanted man in America. You're familiar with the Lincoln conspiracy case? Yes, sir, I am. Then you know that Walter Durant is still at large. Yes, sir. I don't know much about him. Not a single photograph, so we don't even know what he looks like. Yeah. This is all we have on him. Rocky, you were a lot of help to me as a scout and intelligence agent during the war. That's why I want you to go out to New Mexico. I want to know if these incidents have any connection with Durant. If he's behind all this, there's probably more to it than appears on the surface. Rocky, when you get to Santa Fe, I want you to contact Sheriff Jim Wyatt. He's absolutely fearless and absolutely honest. I know him by reputation. But don't even let Wyatt know what you're doing here. We can't afford to take a chance on letting Duran find out that we're working on this. I'm assigning another man to work with you, Horace Harvey Clark. You've never met him, but he'll make himself known to you at the proper time. And if things turn out the way I think they will, you'll need him. Thanks, Major. Well, fella, I never thought I'd be trading you for a railroad ticket, not even for a little while. You and that blackjack, you sure do go together. Well, Sarge, here. You don't have to do that, Rocky. That blackjack will be the pet of the outfit till you get back. Don't worry, I'm not going to waste any time getting back. Come on, give me a hug before I go. Great big hug. <laughs> <Well, that's laughs> I did. Uh, I did? Oh, madam, you were interfering with my pursuit of the printed word. A pursuit to which I have dedicated my life. What are you chasing words for? That is my profession, madam. I am a printer. Oh, a printer. My third husband was a printer. Drank himself to death. I can understand that. <coughs> oh, that awful dust. You know, my throat is so sensitive. I do declare, if it wasn't for my herb medicine, I don't believe I'd be able to take a step from home. <coughs> uh, yes. Uh, that dust is aggravating, mm -hmm. isn't it? Uh, uh, if I may. Oh, certainly. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, planning on staying in Santa Fe, Mr. Uh, Clark, madam. Horace Harvey Clark. To my friends, I'm known as Nugget. I understand there's a thriving newspaper there called The Guardian. I propose to seek employment from its owner, a Mr. John Stewart. And, if successful, Santa Fe will be my new home. How nice you say things. <laughs> What's your name, young man? Rocky Lane, ma'am. I suppose you are like so many other young, adventurous Americans, just uh, looking at the country. No, I'm on my way to Santa Fe. If I can find some kind of work around there, I might stay. Then perhaps we can continue this acquaintance. Oh, that'll be just fine. <laughs> I can obtain a similar elixir for you in just a few minutes. Mr. Clark, you're so thoughtful. <laughs> it's a runaway!
Here, I'll take him. He's my grandson. Anybody know who belongs to this rig? You hurt, Johnny? Hmm? Just my back, Grandpa's kind of sore. You little scalawag. Didn't your mom tell you to stay out of trouble while she was back east? What were you doing with Driscoll's team? Well, some of the kids said I couldn't handle those horses. Mm -hmm. Looks like they were right. You're gonna break your fool neck someday. I ought to dust out your britches for you. He's all right. Much obliged to you, mister. My name's Jim Wyatt. Rocky Lane's my name, Sheriff. This is my son, Tom, and his wife-to-be, Lola Gillette. Hello. Mr. Lane. Glad to know you, Lane. Thanks for not letting the boy get hurt. <laughs> you or anybody had done the same thing. Tom sure would, if he could got to that team. Tom's my right-hand man. He's just shy of being old enough to be a deputy. The minute he is, I'm going to pin the badge on him. If the Lord let me, I'd have made you a deputy two years ago to take Matt's place. Matt was my older son, Johnny's father. He didn't come back from the war. You figuring on staying around here, mister? If I can find some way to make a living, I'd sure like to. What are you in the habit of doing? Well, I've done lots of things. Rode Pony Express, fought Indians, was a member of the 7th Kansas Cavalry, now I'm sort of footloose. Gee, Grip, what a deputy he'd make. I'll bet you two can whip anything. <laughs> Almost every time I get ready to fan your pants, you come up with something that makes a heap of sense. How about it, Lane? That's mighty generous of you, Sheriff. I think I'd like the idea. No use delaying it any then. Come on over to Judge Whitaker's and I'll get you sworn in. We'll be right back. Can I go too? Oh, I suppose so. Come on. <laughs> well, your father's got himself a deputy. Yeah. Sure, I'm afraid. Why shouldn't I be? And we'll have to watch this lane, too. I wish we'd never started this thing. What's going to happen? Tom, don't talk like that. Think of everything we have planned for us when this is finished. Do you want to give all that up? No. Then you'll be at the ranch tonight with the letter. Sure, I'll be there. Better get a place to bunk and buy a good horse. This job calls for a lot of time in the saddle. When it comes to horses, I'm going to be hard to please. Really? Back home, I got a horse called Blackjack. He's just about the best range pony in the West. <laughs> Tell me about Blackjack, will you? A little while, son. Don't jerk him that way, Bronx. You cut his mouth. I want him, didn't I? Yeah, I know, but... <laughs> That's no way to treat a horse, mister. Well, Santa Fe is sure growing up. They got a regular police force now, huh? I'm not talking like a deputy. Just a man who likes horses. Look, I don't know who you are or where you came from, lawman. But I'm Bronc Owens, and I treat my horses the way I want to. This happens to be my horse. I just won him in a poker game. Didn't I, Steve? That's right. He was my horse. You better treat him like you ought to, or I'm apt to take him away from you. that horse up for? I lost $130 to Bronk and gave him the outfit. There's your $130. You just sold your horse. Here you go. Now get out of town. You did a nice clean job, Rocky. But it might cause you a little trouble someday. That's Bronk Owens from Tracy Gillette's ranch. Say he's about half tough. 
Yeah? Well, you got your horse. Now better look for that place to bunk. Yeah, I guess you're right. Can I go with you? <laughs> you bet you can, Johnny. Hello? Now, in addition to the duties I've already explained, Clark, there will be added this business of feeding Jeb Stewart. I call the bird Jeb Stewart because I have a great admiration for that cavalry leader. I was a Union man in my sympathies, of course. I warm to the tribute you have paid so great a leader in defeat by naming this handsome bird after James Ewell Brown Stewart. Well, I must be about some business, Clark. <clears throat> Would you mind putting some water in Jeb's cage? And uh, you might feed him again in about an hour. You'll find some more seeds in the top drawer of my desk. <laughs> I have a feeling we'll get along famously. <coughs> Rocky. Howdy. Come on in. I want you to meet Jeb Stewart. Hiya, Jeb. Hello. The sheriff told me you'd been hired. I just saw Stewart drive out of town. I thought we ought to compare notes. Yeah. You sure landed where Major Larkin wanted you. Right in Jim Wyatt's office. Lucky, huh? I sure like Wyatt. Well, it's mutual. Yeah, he was in here this afternoon right after you rocked us over the horse. He told Stuart that you about matched the ideal he has for his son, Tom. And he's mighty fond of that Tom. Yeah, so I gather. Seems like a nice young fellow. And he's completely wrapped up in that Lola Gillette girl. I'm going to have a look at that Gillette outfit. Find out something? Just that Gillette's a rancher around here and very well thought of. But Bronk Owens works for him. Everybody I've talked to says he's a bad potato. You mean Bronk might lead us to something? I'm hoping so. The man we're looking for is operating around here. Bronx the kind of troublemaker he'd have doing his dirty work for him. You got something there, Rocky. Start at the bottom, work up. It's always been a good philosophy. I'll check with you later. That gun, Owens. What are you following me for? Aren't you a little mixed up, lawman? 
It seems to me you're the one who's doing the following. This road leads to Tracy Gillette's ranch. I work for Gillette. I was just on my way home. Good. I'll ride out with you. Get your horse. Tracy Gillette? I am. What's the trouble, Bronco? Right, I'll do the talking. I'm Rocky Lane, Sheriff White's new deputy. Mind if we come in? Certainly not. Come in. Howdy, folks. Hello, Rocky. Hello, Rocky. You've been getting in trouble again, Bront? He wants to do the talking. You can go over to the bunkhouse. I'll deal with you later. Does it ever seem to you like he acts more like one of the men who've been pulling some of these robberies around here than he does an honest cowhand? I don't blame you for saying that, Mr. Lane, but it just doesn't add up. You see, Bronk is my ranch foreman. I can account for his time almost to the minute. No, Bronk is a tough character, but he's not an outlaw. I just got curious to find out if he did have an alibi. Sorry to have bothered you. Don't bother at all. Good night, Miss Lola. Good night, Rocky. See you in the morning, Tom. Good night, Rocky. This is Bronx gun. Thanks, I'll give it to him. All right, Stuart, he's gone. You handled that very well, Tracy. But I want you to see to it that Bronco Owen stays out of Santa Fe. You can tell him that's an order from me. A brawler like Bronk might upset every plan we've made with all we've got at stake. We were discussing that capital mine letter when we were interrupted. Yes, here it is. Read it, Lola. Sheriff James Wyatt, Santa Fe, New Mexico Territory. Dear sir, on August 15th, we are sending through your county by wagon train a gold bullion shipment of considerable value. Will you please arrange to have the train met at Sandy Crossing and escorted through the bandit country? Very truly yours, J.R. White, Superintendent. When did this come in? This morning. Your father know about it? No, I opened the letter and held it out. Mm-hmm. That means there'll be a complaint from the mine people. What about that? I'll deny I ever heard of it. That's all right. Burn that letter. Tomorrow's the 15th, Tracy. I want that gold bullion. If you want to ride back with me, Tom, come along. Guards, two mounted and two on the wagon. That's easy.
back after they pulled the wagon off. Found it about a mile away. William was gone, but this was stuck in the driver's seat. Hmm. Another one of those things. Let's see that. Six Semper Tyrannus. That's Latin. It means thus to all tyrants. Those are the words Booth shot at the night he assassinated Lincoln. Yeah. Editor Stewart told me all that when we found the first one. He's smart and knows all that stuff. But what does that add up to? That's hard to say, Sheriff. What would you say it meant, Tom? Hmm? Oh, I, I don't know, Rocky. Oh, what difference does it make? What I want to know is why you didn't send out that escort like we asked you to. What escort? The one Superintendent White wrote you about. Here, he gave me a copy of the letter to show your men at Sandy Crossing to identify us. I never got a letter like this. Tom, you handle the mail. You know anything about this? Not a thing, Dad. There's nothing uncommon about a letter getting lost. There is when the loss of that letter results in the robbery of a gold bullion train. I'm going to check with the post office. Tom, you come with me. Miller better get some rest, then we'll look over the scene of that robbery. Yes, sir. What are you doing? Just trying to clean up the office a little. Including the uh, drawers and Tom's desk? Tom's and his father's. There were papers scattered all over the place. Mixed in with gun rags, cartridges, fish hooks, horse medicine. Tom's even got an old pair of suspenders in here. Will you watch out after things while I burn this stuff? Sure. was interested in what was in the desk. It's all right, Lola. Let's go get some coffee. Be right back, Dad. Hi, Sheriff. Hi. Got any satisfaction at the post office? No. They couldn't remember the letter. But then they see so many every day. Oh, well, what'd you do with that knife Miller brought in? Right there. Ever see one of these before? Not around here. Wish I never had. You seem mighty interested in that trash you were burning. Yes, I was. Mind telling me what it was you put in your belt? No, sir, I don't. A friend of mine that I'd soldiered with had written me a letter and I threw the envelope away. I was looking for it so I could write back to him. Kind of funny this fellow knew you were working here in the sheriff's office, isn't it? Well, no. It didn't come here. I picked it up in Kansas City on my way out. I threw it in one of those wastebaskets by mistake. Yeah, I'd better mind my own business. Well, I don't know why you should. A man wouldn't get very far in this country as a sheriff if he did. You'll do. Better get a bite to eat. I want you to come out with Miller and me. All right. Be right back. I found this in a wastebasket in the office. It's postmarked to Pashy Wells four days ago. That means it must have got here yesterday. Mm-hmm. And the bullion train was knocked over today. 
I can't believe that Jim Wyatt is mixed up in this. Well, I don't believe it. Almost everybody in town goes in and out of that office. Yeah, no. But if an outsider stole a letter important as that, he'd pick some other place to throw the envelope away, wouldn't he? Well, maybe he would, and maybe he wouldn't. He was a fool to throw it away in the first place. He should have destroyed it. No argument there. <laughs> Ding dang it, Rocky, you'd make a pretty good crook. <laughs> well, look, I want you to print up an envelope and a letterhead just like this. Why? I'm going to commit a little forgery. We might learn something. It'll take about an hour. I'll be back. My main trouble is I just haven't got the appropriation to hire enough good deputies to cover this country. Well, Sheriff, you're trying to fight practically single-handed, a well-organized outlaw outfit. Someday the folks around here are going to wake up to that fact and give you the money you need. I wish that day to hurry up and get here. I'm getting tired of losing at every turn. A man's bound to break his losing streak sometime. But it can't come too soon to suit me. If you're not all cluttered up with work, would you mind going down to the saddle shop and getting my saddle for me? I left it there to get a stirrup buckle fixed. Be glad to. Wagon crew must be in the shack. Seth Nugget? Yep. You men better get inside. Things are apt to start happening here any minute. Drop it.
Oh, look. Tell me, who got you into this? No. No, I... But you can't tell the old man. Can't tell him what? But me. This. It'd break his heart if he found out I'd been no good. You can't let him get splattered with... How did it happen? Quick. He didn't suffer any. But how, Rocky, how? He knew I'd been spending a lot of time chasing these outlaws. Today I saw a bunch of suspicious looking riders. Gunfight followed and... Tom was with you. I figured he was out with you looking for the wild bunch when neither one of you was in the office. You shouldn't have taken him with you. I'll take that back. I'm glad he was with you. But I guess chasing outlaws was just in Tom's blood. Yes, I guess it was, Sheriff. Of course it was. No son of Jim Wyatt could have anything else in his blood but the pursuit of outlaws. Thank you, John. You've helped this country a lot with your newspaper crusading against lawlessness. Your paper gets around. Can I ask a favor? Anything, Jim, you know that. Just let your paper say that when I find out who shot Tom, I'm going to kill him. It's not a question of surrender. There won't be any. When I find him, I'll kill him. I know that you and the sheriff will have a lot to do, Mr. Lane. I'll be glad to take over Tom's work. That's mighty nice of you, Lola. Maybe we'd better leave him alone now. But Bronk was with Tom when Lane shot him. Are you sure he didn't recognize you? Not a chance. I had my mask up when I left the mine. I wonder why Lane told that fish story about Tom dying bravely in defense of law and order and all that. Probably to save Sheriff Wyatt's feelings. You know, Lane thinks a lot of him. Yes. That's possible. Anyway, Lane's getting too smart. He obviously sent that capital mine letter to trace the information leak in the sheriff's office. Yes, and it worked. The only thing that saved us was he only had one other man with him. I don't know who he was. We lost him not far from the relay station. Do you think Tom talked? Well, I don't know. When Lane shot him, I got out of there. I guess the kid could have talked before he died. Well, just in case he did, I think we'd better remove Mr. Lane before he decides to talk to somebody else. I'll leave the details to you. Oh, you might be interested in knowing that he leaves the office every day for lunch, about noon. Howdy, folks. Howdy. If I mistake not, Mr. Lane, we were supposed to have a sumptuous repast called uh, lunch together. That's right. Let's get with it. Well, you. I'll get you some chocolate, Johnny. Oh, well, Rocky, I'm sorry. You know, I should have started for home an hour ago with these parcels. If you'll help me to the wagon with them, I'll hurry back as soon as I can and let you go to lunch. Why, sure. Mr. Clark won't mind. Uh, Miss Lola, to Horace Harvey Clark, a lady's request is a command. Besides, we weren't hungry anyway. See you later, Rocky. Hey, say, Johnny, uh, go over to the saddle shop and have some new lines put in that bridle, will you? Sure, Rocky. Right over there. Oh, I knew I'd forgotten something. Darning cotton. Do you mind waiting here a minute? Not at all. Uh, I'll even wait, too.
Johnny. Your grandpa's been out there at that Barlow Ranch a long time. Why don't you look around town and see if he's back yet? I wanted to hear this polecat story. Sure, Rocky. There's not going to be any story. I've told you that. Why don't you get smart, Brock? You can get 20 years for attempted murder. Maybe I'm just not smart. Have it your own way. I've ordered some food for him over at the hotel. I'll be back in a few minutes. Don't worry about me, Rocky. I'll be all right. Oh, Lola. You can let me out now. Oh, I can't. That's not the way to do it. Then no, I let you out. You mean you're gonna let me stay here? No, Brock, no. Tonight, my father... You or your father will do it before tonight. I know all about your old man. He sent out to get every gun hand he can hire. You know why? Because this is going to be the top job of them all. And when he pulls that job, he's not going to worry about Bronco Owens sitting in jail. But if he don't get Bronco Owens out of jail, there ain't going to be no big job. Because I can still talk. All right. All right. I'll get you. Everything all right? Oh, yes, Rocky, but I'm glad you're back. Uh, may I get a bite to eat now? Sure, go ahead. I'll say one thing for your jail, Lane. The food service is first rate. It's a good thing you like it, because you'll be doing most of your eating here for some time. Get over in that corner. What's the matter? I don't trust a rattlesnake or a man who tries to shoot me in the back. Have you changed your mind about telling me what's behind all this? I might. By morning. Morning might be too late. Somebody shot him through that window and tossed this gun inside. This isn't going to look too good, Rocky. What do you mean? The whole town knows you've had a couple of run-ins with Bronk. It might look like you got him in here unarmed, then killed him. Do you believe that? Some folks might. There's been some trouble, Lola. Bronk Owen shot. I was just going into the hotel dining room when I heard it. We don't know yet just what happened. Is there anything I can do? No. The job for Rock and me. You'd better go home. All right, Sheriff. Something always happens after I've been well fed. I was coming out of the hotel dining room when I heard the shot. What'd you say? I'd had a late lunch at the hotel. I was coming out of the door when I heard the shot. Well, that doorway must have been awful crowded about that time. Lola told Wyatt and me she was going into the dining room and she heard the shot. Huh? Well, Lola was coming out of the alley back to the jail. I saw her. It didn't seem to mean anything then. Well, it does now. The shot that killed Bronk was fired through that alley window. If she was coming out of the alley like you say she was, she either killed him or saw the one who did. She had to. It adds up, Rocky. Lola Gillette was Tom Wyatt's girl. Tom was giving information to the bandits. You kill Tom, right away Lola speaks up for his job. Huh? Well, that could mean they're still getting information out of the sheriff's office. How do you figure on handling it from here on? Well, first I want to look through Lola's desk. Come on. Let's see this nugget. The commanding officer, Fort Grant. Sheriff James Wyatt, Santa Fe. Subject, Quartermaster Corps Wagon Train. Sir, a contract wagon train bearing supplies and payroll for forts and Indian agencies in this command will pass through your county on October 5th. It'll carry Army personnel, but you are expected to supply any aid requested. 
P.T. Laird, Colonel, Cavalry USA. I'm supposed to read and initial each and every one of these. I've never seen this one before. Then Lola hit it out on you? No, she's smart enough to know I wouldn't go around looking for something I didn't know about. And today's the fifth. With the board pay rolls and the money for the Indian agencies, must be nearly a quarter of a million dollars on that wagon train. I'm getting out of there. Come on, help me get these things back to the desk. Are you in command of this detail, Sergeant? Yes. Who are you? I'm Rocky Lane, Army Intelligence, on detached service from Washington. Is your payroll wagon all right? That was one of the first wagons they knocked over. Well, see what you can do about pulling your outfit together. I'm going to see if I can find some trace of that wagon. so we can get out of here before they jump us. They jump us? What do you mean? Lane got mixed up in that raid last night. I saw him. Did he see you? If I saw him, it's an even chance that he saw me. I'm getting out of this. Don't you realize the one certain way to invite suspicion is to run now? Listen, Mr. Durant. I've warned you never to call me by that name. Durant or Stewart, your dream of building an empire for yourself isn't important enough for me to lose my family. Pack that money. I'll tell you when it's time to leave. You realize I'm bright when it's too late. When I backtracked to the payroll wagon, the money was gone, and this was stuck in the tailgate. And what does Jim Wyatt say about it? I haven't told him, and I'm not going to. Well, maybe I've missed something, but that don't make sense to me. Well, the sheriff trusts Lola like one of his own family, particularly since Tom's death. Oh, and Lola's father is probably the laddie buck who's leaving these little souvenirs around. Maybe he's the man we're looking for. Well, hello, Lane. Clark. Stewart. Hello, Mr. Stewart. I've been looking all over this town for you. 
I've been trying to run down some rustler signs, and I thought you might be able to give me some information. In strict confidence, of course. Well, I'm afraid my acquaintance among cattle rustlers isn't very large. Well, I didn't mean that. What I want is some information on Tracy Gillette. Just what do you want to know? I want to find out where Gillette gets all his money. I know his ranch isn't big enough to run enough cattle to warn all those hired hands he's got. And he spends mighty freely. <laughs> Frankly, I've wondered about that myself. Of course, there is that old mine on his ranch. Did you know about that? Yeah. Maybe he's taking some ore out of there, although uh, I don't know of any shipments. Neither do I. If I may offer a suggestion, Lane, uh, I'd take a look at that old mine. That will at least prove a point. I'm afraid that's about all I can offer. Uh, as a matter of fact, I know very little about Tracy Gillette. Uh, however, if uh, I may be of any further service, don't hesitate to call on me. Thanks for the help, Mr. Stewart. Thanks very much. I'm going to have a look at that mine right now. I believe Santa Fe is well served, I might say handsomely served, by a young deputy like Rocky Lane. Handsome is as handsome does, Mr. Stewart. Nicely said, Clark, nicely said. Oh, by the way, I have a small trunk in the back of my buckboard. I wonder if you'd bring it in for me. No hurry. Surely. Where's Wyatt? He's over Judge Whitaker is getting some tax warrants signed. He'll be back any minute. Then I'll be brief. You've got to tell him now about Lane as we planned. Why? What's happened? Lane just came to me with some cock and bull story about suspecting your father of being a rustler. He's on the way out to the mine now, and your father's there. Well, how am I supposed to know Lane's at the mine? Tell Wyatt. Tell him Lane is waiting for you there to give him your answer. Tell him. Tell him everything, my dear. I know how you feel, but after all, you do owe it to Sheriff Wyatt. What does Lola owe me, John? Well, Jim, I, uh, I think the story better come from Lola. Well, it's, it's about Rocky Lane, Sheriff, and Tom. What about Tom? It was Lane who killed him. Well, I can't believe that, Lola. He told me himself, Sheriff. I was afraid to come to you because of what might happen. That's why I went to Mr. Stewart. I convinced her she ought to tell you, Jim. But why would Lane want to tell you a thing like that? He knew you were in love with Tom. Because Lane's in love with me, or he claims to be. Why did he kill Tom? Well, Tom suspected him of giving information to the outlaws. The day he was shot, he had trailed Lane and caught him talking to them. Later, when Tom accused him of selling you out, Lane shot him. Now I understand why Lane searched the office and did so much writing alone. You know where Lane is now? Yes, Sheriff. He's waiting at the old mine in our ranch for me. Now, Jim, don't do anything. I told you the day Tom was brought in here that I'd kill the man that downed him. That was a pledge I made myself. And I'm not going to break that pledge. What's going to happen when he learns the truth? You'll never repeat it to anybody. I'll see to that. I've got some business to tend to, Lark. It might take me several hours. Oh, take your time. By the way, what's in this trunk? Feathers? Doesn't seem very heavy. Oh, just some clothes I'm sending to relatives in California. Tell me all you know, Lola. It might help your father. What about my father? Lane is on his way to get him now. Stewart seemed mighty anxious to let Rocky know that your father was at the mine. I don't believe it. He wouldn't. Stop to think, Lola. How would I know? 
if it didn't come from Stuart. So that's it. So that's why he just had me tell Wyatt that Lane killed Tom. What's that? The sheriff's following Lane out there now to kill him. And Stewart is following the sheriff. The sheriff shoots Lane. Stewart kills the sheriff. No witnesses. Everyone will think they shot each other. Your father takes the rap for Stewart, and Stewart stands in the clear. Oh, no, he doesn't. I'll kill him. Oh, no. Go up, up, go up. You're me. not going to kill anyone. You're going to sit in one of those cells across the street, but first, you're going to tell me the whole story, and you're going to tell it to me fast, because I got urgent business elsewhere. Come on. I wanted to finish this alone before reporting it to you. You can drop all that, Lane. You've lied to me enough. Answer me one question. Did you kill Tom? Sheriff, you've got to let me answer that in my own way. You're going to answer it, yes or no. Did you kill Tom? Yes, I killed him. But you've got to... And I've got to kill you. What all this, Lane? That man was leveling on you, Sheriff. If he hadn't bungled it, it would have saved me a lot of trouble. Get Lane's gun. What does all this mean? Just a slight change in plan, Sheriff. I'd hoped you'd kill Lane in a desire to avenge the death of your informer's son. My informer's son? What are you talking about? With a little prompting from Lola Gillette, he informed us of everything that went on in your office. Then you knew Tom had sold out to this outfit. I found it out that day, Sheriff. But I didn't know who he was when I shot him. He had a mask on. We've had enough of this. Take him into the mine. Stay where you are! That's the man we want, Rocky. He's Walter Durant. Gillette was only carrying out orders Durant gave him. Lola told me the whole story. Understand about Tom. I'd have given anything if. I know, Rocky. I'm not blaming you any. I hope. Don't be 
disturbed, madam. I've come fully prepared. Mr. Clark, you just think of everything. <laughs> <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.